It's like he's so good to see me. Oh. Sorry, I'm videotaping for the vlog. <laughs> oh, it's John! Oh, we are James Birmingham! Get to the you. Some <laughs> shire. It gets confusing. Come on, I'm supposed to act like like we're meeting for the first time. I'm videotaping you. Are they, are they yeah. filming now? I was, I was organizing this. Um. It's a lot of work. Organizing this has been really, really encouraging actually because so many people threw themselves in. So many people wanted to get on board and, and were prepared to, when we were still organizing this as a festival, were prepared to perform for free, bring resources and kit for free, and just threw, the, threw themselves in and, and realized that this is, it's not any more a conspiracy, it's a, it's a total fact and that's just kind of accepted now. Yeah. Um, but organizing the speakers and um, the site, liaising with police all day, every day, yeah, it's been a bit of a nightmare. How have the police been? The police liaison officers that we're working with are actually cool. And that's a, that's another really encouraging thing about organising this, is that um, we're seeing, I think, that they're... that very, very old divide between protesters and the police has kind of fallen away a little bit. It's now more between us and the seniors. Yeah. And we need to bridge that gap, so that's been really encouraging. They've been quite helpful. Definitely have. Well said. So which mainstream sleeve, sleeve medias have we got? Mainstream? I'm, sorry, I'm not calling them, no. I, I think that this yeah. is a very, this is a remarkable moment. The scales are falling from the eyes of the mainstream media and we must welcome them and we must treat them gently. I mean, some, pe some members of the um, alternative media, I'm not going to mention any names, but they have been harassing and abusing members of the MSM and that is, um, that's not on. It's not on. They've come here. They have realised it's, it's, it's just the seriousness and the, the gravity of this conference. And we have to gently lead them. And you know, and sorry. Yeah, could I won't. You, I, I you, don't mean to be. Yeah. You yeah, know no, what just, it's like. And you, you could just bring someone to come in. I'm sorry. Then I'm these, not these trying to have, have no, no, any. No, of course not. But these people haven't been searched yet. We need to make sure that it's uh, be done with ACOG. Do they, do they give out papers saying what you can and cannot do here, or...? It's something to do with... What was it? Obviously, we're not supposed to be saying anything defamatory. So, you know, we see you is okay, but not like... You're not supposed you scumbag. To, you're not supposed to say... Because this is not... Although well, they call this the freedom of speech zone, this is not freedom yeah. of speech. This is, pri this is a private penitentiary that we're in. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. A rabbit run. No. Oh, good to see you, Stinsy. How are you? How's everything? How you good doing? to see you. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Been working so long. Are you guys live streaming too? No. Or just videotaping? We don't know how to do that kind of shit. Yeah. I'm live streaming now. I could, I could show you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you too. I could teach you guys how to do that. It's fairly easy. Yeah. I love the jacket. Come here, give me a hug. Good to see you, man. How's everything? I'm live streaming now, just so you know. Oh, uh, excellent. I'm eating almonds and I'm spitting almonds <laughs> on everybody. It's okay. It's, it's all about the love. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, so, so it was, it was great. It was great interviews. How are you finding everything here? Uh, well, I tell you, to be honest, I am now like getting more into the Bilderberg spirit. I would say. Yeah. Because it, it reached a certain critical mass, which is, I think a credit to Alex and everybody else. Yeah. It has reached now critical mass where they have a press tent. I'm gonna get out there. And it's now, you know, you think Bilderberg and, and uh, Davos and IMF and all these global con, con facts. And so they all have a lot in common. And so, you know, here's a chance to put the spotlight here. I guess it's all part of the push against wherever these guys gather. It's no longer a conspiracy theory. Kind of. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, what it boils down to is that a, when, when a group like this gets together it's all about collusion yeah so when you read like that um, attacks avoidance oh, well, by um, 
Google or, or Amazon or Starbucks and they you read in the paper that, oh, they're using this technique where they're, they're booking the revenue in one country and they're filtering it through or launch to another country. That all happens at meetings like this five years before. So the, the purpose of a meeting like this is to get together and discuss how to game the system, how to avoid taxes, yep. how to manipulate markets. Huh? And then they all share in those ideas because they're not competing. They're colluding. Yeah. So when Apple just was found out, oh, you know what? We Apple was uh, selling e-books uh, at a predatory prices, and they were colluding in the marketplace. That's, so it's very anti-competitive. It's very anti-capitalist. Yeah. yeah. It's anti-free markets. It's anti-trade. That's, what, the, that's what this meeting is about. That's yeah. what all these meetings are about. It's your destroying free trade. It definitely and is. That's a message that I think is lost. Yeah. Because it's not just about guys doing bad things. There's an, e there's an economic term for it. It's called collusion. And it, even Adam Smith said in Wealth of Nations, yeah, they're, they're coming when people get together, businessmen, you know, when they when they when they assemble, they will <laughs> no. fix prices. And the point of a healthy economy is to put in rules and regulations to avoid that. Yeah. Now these guys want to usurp that. They don't want rules. They don't want regulations. They don't want to have to compete on price. They want monopoly positions. They want monopoly rent seeking. They want all the income. And you see it in the economy. Yeah. Wages are down. Uh, living standards are down uh, by any s metric in the U.S. And health, health, uh, you know, is down competitiveness. America is now not even in the top 20 most competitive countries in the world now. How did that happen? Because yeah. of meetings like this. Hello. The food's lovely. Oh, Thank you so that, much. Uh, it's really good. good. Thank you guys so much for being on here. Are you guys out here just on your own? Well, I'm just doing it, donating my time because he had to go to a funeral. It's actually Para. He's got a Krishna temple in central London and he feeds a thousand homeless people every day. Wow. And um, I know him from summer solstice at Stonehenge, just gone. We, we were there. We were there two years ago, weren't we? Yeah. And um, <laughs> I know him from Glastonbury and different places. We just, we just keep crossing paths. And so he offered me the honor of taking over and dishing out the food so he could go off to a funeral. Wow. <laughs> What's his name and does he have a website that people could support him? Para. Yeah, I, I think he might have. I don't know if he has a website. But what's his name? People could just look up his name. And Para. Um, that's all I know. I don't that's know all you know. That's all I know is Para. Um, so who's, uh, who's he's an Irish guy, Irish, Irish Christian guy. guy. Um, and that's all I can say, but he'll be back later anyway. So awesome. I would love to talk to him. Thank you for the food. It was delicious. I'm really happy you guys are out here. I know Watford said that they would, uh, the hotel here said that they would provide water. But right. they haven't done it yet. No, no, I know. And so. there's a juice guy trying to get in, and I was trying to get him to come in. He was selling it, but I mean, like, you know, so yeah, come in, general, like, people yeah. To buy some juice. yeah, people are thirsty here. So I don't know what's going on yeah. with it and what the police are, are, are doing about yeah. it either. So well, I don't know, maybe maybe go and talk to some of them yeah. and find out what's well, going well, on. Well, thank you for volunteering your time. The no, food was great. So I'm really on par. My photos weren't that great, so. Yeah, it's worthwhile. Thank you, mate. Appreciate that. All right, mate, you're welcome. It's been just around here. Before. Stepping it well, up you, more than me. You started it all. Yeah, but you, still, you, you guys were doing us. better work than we were doing. You guys were climbing freaking parliamentary buildings. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> what? And you guys had advertisements in the damn tube. Yeah, yes, that was cool. that's true. Yeah. yeah, you guys were doing way better than we were doing. I was like, holy crap, I'm about to be outdone by another chapter. <laughs> oh, I gotta set my game up automatically. That healthy competition, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It really is. What's the craziest thing? Uh, out of uh, We Are Change uh, London, when it was still active that you guys did. What was the craziest or funnest thing you did with them? Are you asking me? Yeah. Um, probably the crane in Parliament Square, or uh, Peter Power did very well. Yeah, when you guys confronted that him and he hid point. in the closet. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, that was yeah, he hid in the closet when you were confronting him about the drills. Yeah, yeah. That were going on. He was really intimidating. He was about seven foot tall. He's an ex copper. And he was no, about seven foot tall, really intimidating. And, uh, but yeah, we, uh, Simon was our sort of main researcher, and he found out where Peter. You don't, need, you don't know who Peter Power is, do you? No. He's the guy Power, that was running a drill. Yeah, he went seven, on seven. multiple radio and televi television shows that day because I think he was scared actually. What he didn't realise what he was involved in. Or something. Seven but, seven. Yeah, seven seven. And he went on multiple TV and radio and said, "I was running an exercise for a company of a thousand people, um, running exercises, simulating explosions going off at the precise stations at the precise times they did that day." Now, there's less chance of that happening than all the grains of sand on all the beaches in the world. 
it just can't happen. So we, uh, Simon managed to find out where he was giving it some talk or something and uh, yeah we, we tracked him down and, and tried to interview him um, but he ran off. He ran off and hid in the closet. Yeah. He closed the door behind him. I'm going in here now. <laughs> Is that what he really said? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a closet. He was hiding it. On yeah, it should be. Can you tell me about the crane? Were you there when when? Uh... I was. Me and Simon went up the crane, and it was. Oh, like, you were one of the guys who went up the crane. Like Can you tell us the behind the scenes story it was like of that? Some sort of computer game. Honestly, it was amazing. Um, we called it Operation Squirrel, and Simon had spied out this uh, crane near our Parliament building, and because um, they were. Uh, they were developing this, what turns out now to be the Supreme Court of this country, and a uh, big construction policy uh, thing. And we, what did we do? We, we did a really big circle on it, because we didn't want to get seen by any police or anything. So we did a really big circle on our bikes, dumped our bikes, managed to scramble over about a 10 foot fence. And, and then we were in and it was easy after that. It was sort of, well, a bit scary, because you go quite high on that crane and the crane was uh, luckily the crane door was open so we got in there and then it was also pretty cold but luckily there was a heater there was a radio a television I'd forgotten my tobacco there was some tobacco in there it was like wow this uh -huh. is great so the first night was cool and what was the sign that you had on there you brought up a sign we to the did. crane that was it was for it was to demand the EU referendum that we that we'd been promised and to uh, vote for the uh, yeah. the acceptance into the European yeah. Union or, or exit and um, what we've done actually is it said referendum now but because the side was so big the W went round the corner so it actually said referendum no so we had to rip that bit off pretty quickly <laughs> and then there were Christmas tree lights on the crane which we managed to switch on and then we rang the police and said oh we're up on this crane and they're like, we don't believe you. Shine a torch. Shine a torch. <laughs> they, just, they had a helicopter. Then they sealed off the area. And it, so it was, that was all right. And then I heard you guys said you. Oh wait. Then, then, then I heard you guys say that you're you're not coming down until the media comes down and interviews you guys yeah, and gets yeah, video yeah. of this. We did get interviewed by the media, and I believe we would have been had we had a separate website just for the EU referendum. We could have been on the TV news the next day, but. As soon as we mentioned our website, we are changed to all.uk. That was it. Dropped. Mm. Disappeared off the, off the news. Why so, did they do that? Just because? Because it exposed it. It exposed so much. Yeah. You know, refer EU referendum, that's fine. You know, that's almost mainstream. But the stuff we're talking about, 77911, that is not. That yeah. was not ex acceptable back then. Um, and then the next night, the the because they how long were you up there? Two two nights. Wow. Uh, and the next night they switched off the electric, and so that was really cold, coldest night I've ever spent. And then they also paid workmen to stay late and whack the bottom of the crane with scaffolding bars, which was really scary. I mean, it, it started rocking it and everything, shining searchlights on us. We had to call the police and said, you know, get them to stop. They'd stop and then they start again. And, and then when we came down, we were wearing climbing harnesses and everything, and, and all the workmen were sort of like, oh, they look a bit like us. <laughs> and then the police treated us really well. No handcuffs. They said we agree with what you're saying, but just not the way you did it. They they took no further action. They gave us our equipment back. Did they arrest you? Yeah. And and what happened no, with no that? No further action. No charges. They just put you in jail for a couple of hours and then they let you go. Yeah. This. Yeah. The. the uh, yeah. They. Yeah. The police station. That's so, crazy. Yeah. And then uh, we also went up Westminster Abbey got taken down by a climbing team off there and we got treated really well then we got transported to another police station to get better food That's so, right. <laughs> so as long as you're peaceful you're, you're alright and it's not dangerous you know if we'd have been throwing things down at people and not wearing harnesses and everything that is dangerous yeah so you guys did it properly and you guys didn't even get charged with a crime for, for climbing Climbing a crane on top of the parliament and then staying up there in protest demanding that, that you get interviewed. That was really awesome. I remember hearing that and my mind was like, oh my god.
I, I, I was just outdone a hundred times. This is amazing. This is beautiful. I loved it. It was just so powerful. The video from it was amazing. Seeing you two guys up there waving. Yeah. That was really, really incredible. You guys did really good. Oh, look, now this hey, man hello. I want to talk to. <laughs> it's Mr. Luke. <laughs> we love you, Luke. Luke, we love oh, you. Oh, no. Come on, come on. Get, 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 get him to do the camera. You're always doing the camera. I like right? doing the camera. I, I got two cameras rolling. So look, can I interview you slightly? Of course you can. I've got a little camera over here. Look, of course you can. I'll even put him down. I'm so recording you don't too. You're recording too. Well, yeah. look, here we go. Me, here we go with. Hold up. You want me no, that's fine. I can yeah, just hold God, it up you, this way. you could just hold it. He's, yeah. look, he's got a camera attached to his hand. I'm surprised it isn't. Into my head. Into your head. And oh, he's got the famous Kissinger glasses. Yeah. We love that <laughs> film. Yes. Uh, one of the films that I really liked wasn't really a political film. Uh, it was you on the subway. The Just Keep Going video. Just yeah. Just Keep Going video, which I thought was really heartwarming and uh, and quite. Quite delightful. Uh, where did the idea for that come from? And uh, are you going to yeah. make any other kinds of things like that? Because well, uh, that, that video is, a, is like a one of a kind video. I made it because I was extremely depressed, okay. and I was going through a lot of hardships in my life right now. Very personal things. Just one of the most difficult times. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. You know, I was just like crying like for months. And just one day, you know, just sitting on the subway. I was just miserable and I just decided to stop being miserable and just walk up to these people. I had my camera, just randomly did it. And uh, after making that video, it changed my life and it made my, you know, it made my life for the better. And it brought things into my life and perspective into my life uh, that just made me understand it's really your reaction that matters more than anything else in this world. It's how you uh, respond to things. It's how you take things. It's how you approach things that matter most. No matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, I'm not going to let anyone, anything, or any globalist take away my freedom, my happiness, and my spirit. Can I expand on your quote when you said military men are dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns for foreign policy? I never said that. Bob Woodward? Bob Woodward said you said that. Oh. Oh, Bob Woodward never tell. Nancy, which way do you want he's to what, He's the guy who...